Welcome everyone to a brand new series on Hearts of Iron 4. Unfortunately, I've had to discontinue the series I had going. Uh, it just became completely unplayable on my system. It's a, a really resource heavy mod. Just didn't work out, so I'm, I apologize for that. I would love to have seen what happened with the Empire of Ohio, the Ohio Reich. But instead, we're going to a mod that I know is solid, is stable, and is good to play through, and that is Kaiser Reich. This is a world in which the central powers have won the Weltkrieg, the World War, and we are living in the legacy of that World War. And I've decided to take on the role of Karl I of the Austrian Empire. So let's real quick read the brief history of what is happening with our realm as we dive into this. Kaiser Karl's reign continues in Vienna. And since its victory in the Weltkrieg, the Austro-Hungarian Empire remains united under his rule. However, his diverse realms are racked with division between the left and the right, between those who wish to modernize the empire and those who wish to keep what they hold just the way it is. The renegotiation of the Augsleich, the agreement which brought together the Austrian and Hungarian halves of the empire, is soon approaching. Balancing reform with tradition and state with nationhood will be no easy task for the Kaiser and will be yet another challenge for the people of the Danube. So as we go along, I will kind of cover what's happening in some of the other nations. But just to give a quick overview, at least, of what the nations look like. The Kingdom of Finland, uh, Sweden, and we have Sweden and Norway there. Ireland is united and remains Ireland. The Union of Britain is no longer under a monarchy. The monarchy is, however, uh, in charge of the Dominion of Canada. Um, we've got the Commune of France, of course, the German Empire, uh, Italy is divided. There are, there's a papal state. There are the two Sicilies. Uh, and then there's the uh, Socialist Republic of Italy. There is no Soviet Union. So you can see uh, White Ruthenia, Kingdom of Ukraine, the Don Kuban Union, uh, and then a number of states over here. Uh, China, of course, is not united. Uh, the League of Eight Provinces there. Empire of Japan controls Korea. Uh, and then... Looking over at South America, not a lot has changed really, but we will see significant upheaval happening in many of these nations as we go along. So uh, Germany, of course, is ruled uh, by Kaiser Wilhelm II, who historically died in 1940 or 41, I think. Um, he was in the Netherlands in exile, but we are Austria. So let's go ahead and dive in to our national focus. There's a lot here, and so we really don't want to just choose something at the beginning without really thinking through the direction we might be going. Obviously, as we read in the beginning, there's a lot to think about, and we're going to need to decide what direction we want to go. Uh, do we want to go status quo? Do we want to focus on our monarchy? Do we want to go socialism, democracy? So many things we can do. Honestly, to me, that's secondary right now uh, compared to making sure that my industry and my economy are doing well. So uh, that's kind of my initial focus. Uh, economic rehabilitation plan I can't do until after March 1st. So right now we're going to do the general elections. Oh, we can't even do that. So we've got to find what we're able to do right off the bat. It doesn't appear we can do much of anything quite yet. So I guess we have to wait until March 1st to actually do anything. Our army has 141,000 in the field, uh, very tiny air force. We do have a significant navy, at least uh, for a power that has very little um, area to cover on the water. We do have four research slots available, so we'll do all the usual stuff at the beginning. The research tree is pretty much the vanilla tree from Hearts of Iron, uh, so there's not really any changes that have been made here. So we'll do all the things that I typically do to start so we can kind of get off on the right foot. I don't know how quickly we're going to end up at war, so I want to at least get some basics going there. Uh, civilian factory wise, I think I'll probably start. Oh boy, we don't have a lot of great infrastructure going here, do we? Uh, and I'm kind of curious about where we are on resources. We don't have much of anything in terms of resources. Uh, we're importing a ton. What's our trade policy look like right now? Um, so actually we're missing some of the other things that you would normally have here. We do have civilian economy. Uh, we have an export focus. Ah, oh boy. That's pretty rough to start. 
So I guess we start with some civilian factories. We'll try to put them where we do have the best infrastructure, which is only 60%. And we'll kind of go from there. Looks like I have 19 divisions to start. We'll just get them all in one army just to kind of keep track of all of them. And uh, I know there have been some changes to how the templates work. And I've read a lot of places that the typical kind of 20-width uh, infantry formation that has kind of been the go-to thing uh, as a basic is not necessarily the way things are now. But uh, let's take a look at the situation in Austria in 1936. Desti despite standing amongst the victors of the Weltkrieg, uh, the war revealed the divisions of culture, class, and ideology. That's totally true. The Austro-Hungarian Empire, Empire is this hodgepodge of multiple um, ethnic groups and nationalities and cultures and classes and uh, it's very hard to hold together in the best of times. Kaiser Karl, uh, following the footsteps of the assassinated Franz Ferdinand and trying to reform the multinational Austro-Hungarian Empire into something that could survive into the 20th century, launched a series of large-scale reforms. However, his efforts were largely blocked by the nobility on the Hungarian side of the empire. Uh, so what we're probably facing here is either a way of appeasing both sides or we're going to have to go to war with the Hungarians. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be the latter, but we'll see. Uh, so whether reform will be able to find its way to Hungary, only the Kaiser knows for sure. So the upheaval begins, and it's going to begin in Russia. Uh, we just had the assassination of President Kerensky, uh, and taking advantage of the chaos in Moscow after the assassination, uh, Lavier Kornilov and his officers, with the help of combat squads, took to the streets of Moscow. So we're going to start to see uh, some unrest there, probably a military coup of some kind, a civil war. And that will raise world tension. We need world tension uh, to start rising so we can do things. Um, for example, uh, expanding the military. We can't do that until we hit 10% world tension. I think we'll get there pretty quickly if Russia continues down the road it's on. Well, George V passed away in exile in Canada, which historically he did die in 1936. Uh, his son, who was known as David, succeeded him as Edward VIII, but by December was off the throne in favor of his brother, who became George VI. So we'll probably see all of that unfold, but of course none of that is in Britain. That's actually in Canada. The Fifth Anglo-Afghani War. That did not do anything to raise world tension. Black Monday. Okay, so on the 3rd of February, 1936, the Berlin Stock Exchange stopped sinking. It plunged. Main got electoral gridlock in France. So we're seeing the Great Depression. Instead of 1929, it's happening in 1936. So our economy just got nailed. Stability takes a hit. Construction speed, production efficiency cap takes a hit. Factory output, resources to market. All of that is just devastating to our economy right now. Austrian elections of 1936. That's uh, for the people to decide. So I think we're going to probably bypass uh, the general elections of 1936. Uh, it says that this focus will eventually be automatically bypassed and will unlock other focuses. So we do have uh, some input into the elections that happen and we can decide which way we want to go uh, we're either going to change the popularity of social democracy by two percent or by seven percent and right now the social democrats uh, have 37 percent 47 percent for the social conservatives i think i'm going to lean with the social conservatives but we'll see i could dismantle my faction i don't want to do that so we're going to go with, I'd prefer if they didn't claim the successes of a joint government as their own. All right, we're starting to see war break out in China between the different factions there. The CS invites Prince Otto to hunt. I feel like anytime you invite someone to hunt, it's like a bad, yeah, look at that, hunting accident, 20% chance. Uh, the Imperial family is above such trivial things. Uh, well, there's 80% chance it'll go well. Do we risk that? I mean, is that a chance we want to take? The social conservatives still have the edge. Ah, no, I'm going to pass on that, I think. Uh, we're at 7% now, uh, world tension, because of these wars that are breaking out in China. And you can see how quickly things are changing there. 
There's March 1st, so now we can at the very least do our economic uh, after 1 o'clock. There we go. Why won't it let me do it? Oh, our economy must be ready for such undertakings. And it is not. Okay. So we still cannot do anything with national focus trees. Now, I can spend 20 uh, political power here uh, to endorse one of these parties. Uh, the Christ, uh, Christlich Social, that's the uh, social conservatives. I can endorse them and give them a little boost. So I think we'll go ahead and do that. Because that is kind of the direction that I'm leaning with them. I don't know entirely what that's going to mean, but it's a super close election right now. The final tally is in. After the hard-fought election campaign, we shall now find out the winner. The CS won the elections. All right, cool. So we've bypassed the focus for the general elections. We're still not able to do that one, but now we have some choices of some things we can do. And this is where it gets interesting because we can go down the uh, this route here or we can go down this route. Public welfare reforms um, we can't do because the Social Democrats didn't win. So uh, we have to go National Austerity Council. Eventually we'll have this renegotiation down here we'll be able to do. Uh, so we're going to start with this one because it's really the only choice we have at the moment. Shall we export arms to Venezuela? No, I don't think so. We can't really spare any arms of our own. Uh, we're almost done with National Austerity Council. There's a Republican re revolution in Iran. We're still sitting at 7% world tension. Uh, here are the current... The War of the Five Provinces is the one that's going on right now, and that's basically uh, kind of a civil war in China that's happening. It looks like pretty even odds at the moment. So constitutionalism has won out in Bulgaria, and we have completed National Austerity Council. Now, fill the coffers. It takes 56 days. It uh, softens the blow of Black Monday a little bit. It increases our factory output and our resources to market will get a little better. Compromise with the Social Democrats. That will remove socialist promises and improve my base stability. We'll get three building slots. That doesn't really help me though there. Just looking down the road here. I feel like this is the way to go over here. So let's go fill the coffers. So one of the things I love about this mod is there are constant major decisions that need to be made that can influence the direction that the world goes. In this case, I'm not going to take the time to read all of this, but basically we have a choice to make about how we want to exert our influence over the Italian government. The, you can see the Italian uh, nations to our south there. Can we support the Liberal Democrats, uh, the People's Party, or uh, overt influence would merely empower the ANI? So we're going to do nothing in this case and just gain a little bit of extra political power, which I really don't have anything to spend it on at the moment. Uh, Greece sees it as Austrian assets. Not cool, Greece. Not cool. Uh, now, the problem is, of course, Black Monday has hit all of us hard. We could apply sanctions, but that'll probably hurt us as well. Um, apply sanctions and express our outrage. Uh, we could pull all business out at once. I feel like that's what I'm going to do here. We're going to pull all business out at once. If I do legislate freedoms, uh, I'm taking a look at what that will do. That'll help our stability. Um, I think that actually is a good idea because we've got the political power to spare. Our stability is not great at the moment. It's only at 38%. So anything we can do to boost that up a little bit, I think will be helpful. We've got a new infantry division to put into the field. All right, there's an end to that war in China. We're still sitting at 7% on the world tension. Done with some research. Let's go ahead and see where we're at on things. I think at the very least we ought to get up to a 1936 fighter for air power if and when we need it. Let's go ahead and do concentrated industry as well. So we've completed fill the coffers. Let's go ahead back over here. I, I want to see for a second. I know we can't do anything with the military yet. Uh, we're still not at the place where we can do economic um, rehabilitation plan. I think we're probably going to have to fill all of this out and get uh, what we need in order to be able to do that. So let's continue down this direction. 
Real quick, just looking at the factions as they exist right now, we have the Reich's Pact, uh, which actually includes uh, some of the Western, what we would have known in this time, in our timeline as uh, parts of the Soviet Union, like Ukraine and modern day Belarus. Uh, they're part of that along with Belgium. The Third International, so those are the socialist nations, include uh, Britain and France. It looks like we've got uh, the Entente still in existence, uh, which includes Canada. And not much else. Uh, most of Africa is between the Entente and the Reichspact. Uh, looks like British, what was British India is part of the Entente as well. And then the Russian Republic is its own giant faction. Um, so yeah, the Dominion of India is still part of that. And they are ruled by... Ganja Singh. All right, cool. The fall of the Kingdom of Finland. Founded in the ashes of the Russian Empire, the Kingdom of Finland has remained since the end of the Great War. So it looks like they've gone nationalist. So that changed very quickly. And now we have a military coup in Poland. So things are starting to hit a little closer to home, and they're happening pretty quickly. So we're going to have to kind of just keep one eye on on what's happening in the world. But none of that is generating a great deal of world tension. Getting inflation under control has completed. German East Asia declared war on the Indo-Chinese Union. Uh, and then we have the creation of the International Avant-Garde. So it's a festival to show off the fruits of syndicalist governments. Interesting. Um, that's obviously going to be a threat to us down the road. Careful investments. That's going to get us additional bonuses to stability, construction speed, production efficiency cap, factory output. All very good things that we need. So now we've seen uh, a coup in Algiers. Um, the French Republic, uh, which is uh, now ruled by Henri Mordac, uh, authoritarian Democrat at the moment. And they're a part of the Entente, of course. See what's happening in Morocco. They're part of the Reich's Pact. The Ottoman Empire still exists, by the way. Uh, so there's that. Of course, that makes some sense since they were a part of the Central Powers. But they're not in any faction now. The Legation Council votes on providing aid to Zichuan province. Uh, this is a part of what's going on in China. I'm going to abstain. I don't really have a, a say in that one. Radicals win Serbian elections. So now we've got a concern down there on Hungary's southern border. These are the folks that started the last war. Or at least that's our viewpoint on the matter. I don't think we can do what we need until we do everything on this side now. So uh, let's go there next. I don't think we're at the place where we can do the rehab yet. No, we aren't. All right, we've got a new faction here. Romania has joined the Belgrade Pact to contain the growing power of Austria and Bulgaria. Romania has acceded to the Belgrade Pact. Austria and Bulgaria watch with fear as the powder keg grows close to exploding once again. Uh, it, the Balkans were called the powder keg of Europe. Uh, and so that's a reference to that. There's the foundation of the Belgrade Pact. Serbia, Romania, and Greece. Three Balkan members of the Entente. All with revanchist views of their own. All right. Hopefully the Balkans won't start another world war. That's right. I have a feeling they might. Congress of Belgrade argues for a new order on the Balkans. All right, so uh, we can embargo the Serbs and Romanians, uh, or we can really kind of do nothing. Uh, I don't know that I want to really kind of tick them off right now, uh, just because of where we're at in terms of our economy. I want to be in a stronger position and deal with the whole Hungarian issue before we go venturing off into another war in the Balkans. A couple of things just happened. I just saw Spain break up into three, right as uh, Floyd Olson was elected president of the United States on the farmer labor ticket uh, in its first national election victory in U.S. history. Uh, I know that this mod can, can have the possibility of a U.S. civil war, so I'll be interested to see if that happens. Uh, Indo-Chinese Union and German East Asia ended their hostilities. But there was definitely a, a breakup over here of Spain. We've got the Kingdom of Spain. And then uh, the CNT FAI. And then Carlist Spain. 
And just like that, we now see a civil war in that region uh, as all three of them have declared war on each other. So we're going to see who wins out. It's a what they call a Mexican standoff where you have three people and each one of them is holding two guns at the other two. That's what's happening here. We've got a three-way war. It's going to be very interesting to see how that unfolds. Uh, we've got exiled divisions. So the Spanish Civil War and we also now... Um, have legionnaire italy they were part of the um of our we were protecting them and the reason we've got exiled divisions now is because they've basically kicked us out because uh they have gone a different direction the ani national populists have taken over there uh, we've got outdated qu equipment and production because we've just developed a new fighter so let's go ahead and upgrade those and we'll go for concentrated industry two we're about to develop our new artillery let's look at armor for a second we do want to have some decent tanks available to us i don't know when war is going to happen so i have to be prepared for it it's not like i really have a lot of say in that i might but i don't really know for sure support companies let's get hospitals going look back at infantry again Uh, I don't think we're quite ready for that yet. Construction 2. We are going to primarily be an infantry uh, army. So I'm um, just looking at uh, our chief of staff for our military. I think I'll go with this guy here. Recruitable population 0.5%. Uh, infantry division attack and defense 5% bonus. It's late December 1936 now. We've got just a few more on this particular part of our focus tree. We'll get Men the Social Riff for 35 days, then What We Need, which I think, if I understand how this is all going to work, I would expect at that point we'll be able to do Economic Rehab Plan, but I don't know that for sure. We completed Men the Social Rift. We are over 10% world tension now because of the war in Spain. Uh, so I could complete this, or I can go... No, I still can't do that because our economy is not ready for such undertaking. So everything's just about the economy right now. All right. I had a feeling this might happen. Standoff in America. President Floyd Olson experienced a major blow today. as a large number of governors declared his government illegitimate, throwing their support behind either populist Huey Long or syndicalist leader Jack Reed. So we may very well see a three-way civil war in america as well in fact we already do there's a combined syndicalists uh, syndicates of america so that's wisconsin michigan illinois indiana ohio west virginia and pennsylvania uh, the united states makes up the rest except for basically a good chunk of what was the confederacy in the american civil war the american union state so we're looking at oklahoma texas arkansas louisiana alabama mississippi or mississippi alabama Georgia, South Carolina, and Florida. Interesting. We'll see what happens. I'm sure that's going to be a war that breaks out here soon. So there, the second American Civil War has broken out. Uh, they're all going to declare war on each other, kind of like what we saw happening in uh, Spain. And I'm just waiting to see that go down in Russia, too. The more chaos happens elsewhere, the more it's probably likely to happen to us as well. Okay, getting closer to home, the Fourth Balkan War. There were a couple of Balkan Wars that happened before World War I in that lead-up uh, to that event. Uh, the Serbian Republic has declared war on Bulgaria. I imagine we may get invited to intervene in this at some point. But so far it hasn't happened. So there's what we need. Now let's see if that allows us to do this one. Yes, now we can do the economic rehabilitation plan. Excellent news. We've got to watch the powder keg down here and see what happens. My goodness, things are unfolding rapidly now. Uh, there's a lot of wars happening all over the place. We'll see how that all shakes out. We'll definitely have ourselves a new world order when it's all done. All right, every 10 years since 1867, Austrian and Hungarian delegations meet to discuss how much each side of the empire puts into the common ministries. Uh, so this is where we're going to have ourselves a negotiation uh, about 
are we going to be friends? Are we going to merge? Are we going to reform the uh, Austro-Hungarian Empire as we once knew it? Uh, are we going to go our separate ways? What's going to happen? Okay, do we invite others to the conversation? Uh, no way, this is between us and the Magyars. Magyar is the Hungarian word for Hungary. Um, for Hungarians, you're right, invite the Bohemians, the Galicians, and the Illyrians. Invite all the peoples of the dual monarchy. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's see what happens. I have no idea what any of these choices are going to do. So, Hungary attends. Excellent. We'll see who else actually attends. Delegations arrive. Bohemia, Galicia, and Illyria. Excellent. Hungary protests against the other delegations. They don't like it. Galicia and Lodomeria agree to attend. Bohemia agrees to attend. Illyria agrees. Hungarian delegate holds a speech. All right. He said, are we not to be proud of the Austro-Hungarian Empire? For decades now, the man in Vienna has strived to reform what was already perfect. I believe that Austria and Hungary together have a part to play in the future of the world. Together we shall make Austria-Hungary great again. While his compatriots were visibly disturbed by this implication that Kaiser Karl's federalization policies were a mistake, he himself seemed rather pleased. All right, so um, he's right, though, isn't he? Uh, how insolent. So yeah, we'll just kind of go with the middle of the road there. I want to wait and see how this all unfolds. Hungary demands reparations. A hefty sum of money be transferred to their treasury. Uh, no. This is precisely why you pay less taxes now. Not happening. Bohemia proposes a Slovak state. All right. This is a thing Hungary should be consider should consider. Um yeah, let Hungary give up territory. Nicaragua declares war on Honduras. The Polish pro propose a Polish protectorate. Man, there's so much happening. Now we've got the socialists getting together to, to talk. Galicia demands Transcarpathia. No, we're not giving up territorial concessions. That's not why we're here. I'm trying to merge things, not give up more. We're going to say no to everybody. All right, what's happening here? Justification. France. France is justifying on us. Okay, how long is that going to take? Looks like they justified and then immediately called it off. That happens sometimes. Or did they? Um... Yeah, you should consider that. We're not giving up anything. This ends the Augsleich. All right. So we've bypassed that part of our national focus tree. A lot happening right now. So much happening all over the place. About to complete a bunch of new uh, researches as well. So once we complete economic rehabilitation plan... We're going to have some choices to make there as well. Uh, let's look at armor some more. I want to start building some tanks here soon. Okay. I want to look down here for a second because I think, yeah, we can start choosing the direction of our nation. And this is where it's really going to matter because this is where we're going to try to reform the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Although it might just be the Austrian Empire. I don't know. We'll see. Let me look around this a little bit. Okay, so over here, end the dual rule. Now, we can't do that yet uh, because we need some things to happen first. Uh, but I think choosing any one of these excludes us from being able to do any of the others. So we have to think carefully about this. Uh, ending the dual rule gives us all these options here for some economic things that we can do. But there are economic things that can happen other ways, too. Man, this is where you really make the decisions that determine the outcome of the rest of the game. Uh, crush Serbia, claim Romanian lands, reclaim Silesia, renew Sicilian ties, 
uh, unify Italian lands. That's all a part of this down here. Uh, in the meantime, let's work on expand the Austrian military. So things are happening in the Spanish Civil War now. We can advance now to early mobilization. So let's go ahead and do that. That'll start helping our economy a little bit. That frees up some new military factories. Uh, let's start ramping up our fighter production a little bit. Uh, I think we could probably actually increase our production of infantry divisions as well. We still have free military factories. Okay. Um, Let's start doing support equipment because what's going to happen is once I get some army experience, we're going to add hospitals and some uh, support artillery, things like that. In fact, I should probably just go ahead and start some exercises to start earning some experience for my military. Nationalists have taken over in the Netherlands. Uh, we see Carlist Spain starting to lose in the Spanish Civil War. Uh, in the American Civil War, the United States of America has lost territory to Canada. It looks like Canada now controls uh, New England and New York. Uh, the U.S. doesn't have a lot over here on the East Coast. Mostly their bastion is the Northwest. Interesting. I'm going to send an attache uh, to Serbia. That's going to help us as well with our military experience so between those things uh, we're going to gain 0 0.06 a day so we'll start building that up pretty quickly all right let's go ahead over here to the economy now uh, expand domestic farms that'll add some building slots that doesn't really do a lot for us adding infrastructure and railways would be helpful uh, adding another research slot also helpful and we could join the vienna circle I'm looking here at the uh, six new military factories that we can get down there, plus the production of steel. I think we're going to go there. I like that a lot. Icelandic independence from Denmark. Interesting. There's war breaking out now in South America. Peru declared war on Ecuador. We can go to partial mobilization, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's look over here at South America for a minute. Uh, Chile and Argentina are at war. The Patagonian Workers' Front down here in the south. Man, just things happening all over the place. So we have 18 Army experience now. We're gaining it pretty rapidly. We do have support artillery already. Um, I think I'll go ahead and just go with the traditional width for the time being. Unless somebody can tell me what they think might be better with the, the latest downloadable content. I've been told this width isn't necessarily the best anymore. But uh, until I hear of something better, that's kind of where we'll go. All right, we don't quite have enough for the field hospitals yet, but we'll have it in a few days. In order to have hospitals, we have to start producing uh, motorized vehicles. So let's go ahead and do that. And now with our additions and our changes, we do have uh, a bit of a backlog in terms of what we need to be constructing. And of course, we don't have nearly the steel or the aluminum or the rubber to be able to produce these things. The formation of the Moscow Accord. All right, let's take a look. Uh, we're going to be wrapping this episode up here soon. Uh, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, this is the area that uh, is part of our faction. Uh, there's the Belgrade Pact, the Reichs Pact, of course. Uh, the Moscow Accord is the new faction that the Russians are a part of. And not a lot else has changed at the moment. So we are now in uh, late July, 1937. We've played through about a year and a half of the game time. Uh, I do have some more unassigned divisions here. So um, I think I've got them pretty well where I want them to be. We'll, we'll go ahead and build up some more army experience because I'll need some to design my armor when the time comes. But uh, a lot is going to change for me moving forward. I think the next episode uh, is going to be really where the rubber meets the road as far as what's going to happen with my part of the world, which is Central Europe. 
so let me know your thoughts. If you have any input, if you've played this mod as Austria, do you know what I'm headed for and have any helpful tips, any advice, any suggestions, any requests, use the comment section below. Hit that like button if you want to see more, and we'll try to come back with an episode every other day in this series. Thanks for watching.